it's always wonderful um, to be with the Press Association. I really want to take an opportunity, uh, first of all, to just thank you all. Uh, I know uh, what a challenging time it is uh, to be in the newspaper business. Uh, I know the important role that you all play uh, for our communities all across the state. Uh, and, and I know the important role that you play uh, in terms of our Constitution and in terms of our First Amendment rights in particular. But as uh, we go through a whole range of challenges as a state and as a country, um, making sure that everybody has uh, the news, that they've got the facts, that they understand um, what's happening uh, in an objective way, uh, there's nothing more important than that. And uh, being able to do that in, in all of our communities, uh, you just play an unbelievably crucial role whether it's the news nationally, whether it's the news in our communities, whether it's local developments, um, really, really grateful for everything you do. Um, when, you, when you look at the challenges that we're facing today, uh, I think that we have to look at them in several categories. I think we face tremendous challenges globally. Uh, I, uh, when you look at the, what we're seeing on the news today in terms of what Russia is doing with respect to Ukraine, what we're seeing with China and Taiwan, uh, what we're seeing from North Korea, um, the world is a very um, dangerous place at this moment and, and is looking for U.S. leadership. And we have not been demonstrating it. So as you think about what we're facing in terms of, of really an assault on our fundamental freedoms globally, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, the extent to which our country is gonna to have to make a choice. And the choice is whether America is gonna to help to lead and defend freedom and defend our values, or whether countries like China and Russia uh, who don't share our values, don't share our commitment to fundamental freedoms, whether they're gonna fill the gap and whether they're gonna lead. Uh, and it's a decision that we have to make now when we think about what kind of role we're going to play in the world. At the same time we're facing those challenges internationally, we're certainly facing challenges here at home. And, and those challenges are uh, many of them connected to the pandemic, connected to what we're still dealing with. I know you all see in our communities across the state um, the challenges that our healthcare system is still facing. I just spoke yesterday to the Wyoming uh, Hospital Association and to some of our uh, long-term care providers around the state and the challenges that they face both from our hospitals that have got people now with the Delta variant in our ICUs and in, in uh, hospital beds, um, what they're facing in terms of being able to get nurses, uh, being able to get skilled care, um, what they're dealing with because of vaccine mandates. Uh, and I believe strongly that everybody ought to get vaccinated. I think it's really important. Um, I think it saves lives, uh, but I think that the Supreme Court was right when they said that uh, the federal government does not have the power, the authority to impose a mandate on private businesses. Um, but it's a public health issue we're going to continue to deal with, and I know our health care system here in Wyoming is facing that. Uh, we're facing economic challenges in terms of inflation. Uh, in terms of, of making sure we have a continued commitment to the industries that matter so much to us here in Wyoming. Um, I believe that our fossil fuels are a national treasure. And I believe we ought to be, be uh, ensuring that we're using all of the above and pursuing an all of the above energy policy. But policies that come from Washington that are to, intended to hurt the fossil fuel industry are misguided, and they're misguided economically, and they're misguided from a national security perspective. And so I work uh, every single day with our delegation to help to push back against those, to help to defend our industries here in Wyoming. Um, I'm working.